In this video, I will go over the process to extract piperine from black pepper. Piperine is one of the compounds that makes up the timeless smell of black pepper. Extracting it can be a lot of fun, and it can be used for a number of different projects like cosmetics, natural medicine, and making insecticides. I will also place a link below to the general method I followed, but without further ado, let's get into it. We only need three starting materials, which is black pepper, potassium hydroxide, and alcohol. The specific procedure I'm following calls for ethanol, so that's what I'll use. However, any other alcohol could be switched out and it wouldn't make too much of a difference. The first thing we'll need to do is grind our black pepper down into finer pieces. This increases the surface area and the extraction rate. For this project, I'm using 50 grams of black pepper, and in theory, this contains anywhere from 4-7% to piperine. So, we should end up with about 2.5 grams of piperine if all goes as planned. Once everything has been ground to a nice size, I will go ahead and explain the piece of glassware I'm using for this project. It's called a sock slit extractor, and it was made by a German chemist named Franz Ritter von Sockslit. He created this piece of equipment to originally help separate milk from fats, though since then it has been a way to speed up a hot solvent extraction. It consists of three pieces, a flat or a round bottom flask, which sits on the bottom and holds the initial solvent. On top of this is the middle piece of the extractor that is connected to the jointed piece of the flask. This is where the extraction takes place and you will see that in just a few minutes. Finally on top of everything is a cold water condenser that condenses the solvent and makes sure all of the solvent stays within the apparatus itself. Preparing the sock slit is pretty simple and we'll start by placing a piece of cotton at the bottom. This is to prevent any other material, in this case pepper, from going through our siphon tube. Once the cotton is in place, we'll add our finely ground black pepper. We want to make sure everything is pretty level while doing this, and so we level it off if it isn't. Then we'll add in a second piece of cotton on top, and we're done setting up the main body. The next thing we need to do is fill our round bottom flask with solvent, add in a stir bar, and assemble the sock slit extractor. From here, we will turn on the stirring and heating and wait for everything to heat up. Once heated, we will see an alcohol vapor travel through the sock slit before condensing and dripping on top of a piece of cotton. Once the cotton is saturated, the ethanol will drip through the pepper, pulling all soluble compounds before filling up our siphon tube. To show everything a little closer, the ethanol drips down from the condenser, travels into the siphon tube, and evens the pressure in the main compartment. Once everything is at the top, gravity naturally takes over and pulls all of our ethanol back into the boiling flask, before starting this entire process over. And this is one full pass in our sock slit extractor, and it took 38 minutes from start to finish. I am running it for 4 total passes to make sure I get all available piperine to be extracted. Once the 4th pass is complete, I turn everything off, set up a simple distillation, and this is to remove about 70% of the total volume of ethanol. As the distillation takes place, it will allow the concentration of piperine and other compounds to increase. This also lets me reclaim some of my ethanol, which I can distill again later to purify before adding it to the main stock. After 70% of the total volume is distilled off, I turn off my heating mantle and lower my jack stand. I will filter everything once through a simple piece of cotton before continuing on to my next step. This is to remove any solids that made it through the cotton during the extraction. While this is filtering, we want to make a 20% solution of potassium hydroxide and ethanol. To do this, I add 4 grams of potassium hydroxide into 20 milliliters of ethanol, and to get everything to dissolve, we heat up the solution and keep it stirring. We will then add in our 20% potassium hydroxide solution into the previously filtered solution. What is happening here is the potassium hydroxide is neutralizing the acids and making the fatty acids that were brought over during the extraction more soluble in water. This will benefit us on our next step when we crash out the piperine. We leave everything mixing for about 90 minutes before proceeding on. Next, we will filter everything off just a second time before moving on to crash out the piperine. 
This is to make sure all of the insoluble junk gets filtered before our next step. Once everything is filtered, this procedure calls just to add water. Every time we add water, we should see an amount of piperine crashing out of solution. This is because piperine is really insoluble with water, but water and alcohols love to mix, so the piperine is kicked off and becomes less soluble. As a side note, I should have used a larger flask because I eventually had to split the solution up into two before continuing on to add water. Eventually, we'll add water and it won't look like any more piperine is crashing out. And this is where we can stop. From here, I plastic wrap the flask and put it in the fridge for about 50 to 60 hours to really let the purpurine fully crash out and settle. A few days later, when I take it out of the fridge, I see a nice thick layer of piperine sitting at the bottom. We will do one last filtration step, but this time it is recommended to use a vacuum filter in order to dry the piperine. This entire process takes about 10 to 15 minutes, but with a better vacuum, this would have been a lot faster. Eventually I am left with a thick yellow paste and it smells distinctly of black pepper. I collect all of the piperine into a flask in order to purify it once more. I then dissolve all of it in some warm ethanol. If you use too much ethanol, it is possible just to boil away some, and in total I used about 18 milliliters, which actually turned out to still be too much. If all steps in this process are done correctly, you will have nice crystals forming. As the solution cools down though, Either crystals will form, or the piperine will just be cleaned more and fall back out of solution. Unfortunately, I received the latter. Recrystallization is sometimes referred to as a dark magic because some things really don't like to crystallize just because of a small amount of impurity in the product. In future videos, I'll probably come back to this project and try to achieve crystals one more time. Though, I do have my hand full right now with some other projects that, in my opinion, are much better and much more fun. In the end, I got about a 3% yield of piperine, which in all actuality is pretty low. When I finish my projects, I like to do an in-depth process review in which I find areas which could have been ex executed better. Usually it has something to do with adding too much solvent, not mixing things for long enough, or similar small mistakes that can be changed. In this process review, I realized I should have used about 3 times more potassium hydroxide than I did. Besides this, I could have grinded up the pepper into a more uniform size, and I should have used less ethanol in the recrystallization step. All of these things put together would have probably ended in a more purified and nice product, but at the end of the day, learning from the mistakes is the most important thing. I really feel fortunate to be able to bring these videos out, and I want to thank my Patreon subscribers for always being a great community and helping support my videos, and you can see their names here. Finally, here is a list of all the videos I'm planning for the future, and until next time, have a great rest of your day.